Hello and welcome to App Spy's Eye on the App Store. It's Wednesday and that means we are previewing all the new games that are about to come out on the App Store in the UK and the US in 24 hours time. We're giving them to you a day early so you can see what they look like and see if you care and what you need to get tomorrow. My name's James Gilmore and I'm the editor of App Spy. Sitting above me, virtually speaking, is Peter Willington. Oh, hello. Hello there. He is a App Spy contributor. He also runs bits of Pocket Gamer as well. Just bits and pieces, the boring bits and pieces, yeah. Exactly, the sister site that uh, is part of our overall little network here. Uh, so, if you've just joined us and this is your first time, welcome. Uh, what we're going to do, first of all, is show you the games that we have coming up over the course of the next hour, hour and a half. So, stick around if you want to see some new stuff. Um, the list here, we've got things like Flash Out 2, which is based, well... Heavily mm. inspired, let's say, uh, by races like Wipeout. Um, mm. You've got uh, Scuba Diver, which is something to do with fish. Haven't really looked at it yet, but we're going <laughs> to find out together. Um, Cabin Escape, if you've played Forever Lost, I think it's called. It's a point-and-click adventure. It's kind of a prequel chapter to that, so that should be fun. Um, we've got uh, Little Big Adventure, which is a game from way back in the 90s. They've ported onto iOS. We're going to see what it looks like. A little robot thing called Clark. Don't really know what it's about. We're going to find out. Um, some, a game called Sometimes You Die. Which sounds a bit ominous, but you know, we'll see how that goes. And kind of the big release that will be coming out this week, Boom Beach, which is mm. Supercell's successor to Clash of Clans. This is the third game Supercell has ever released on iOS, uh, and might be the next Clash of Clans, or will it be? We don't know. <laughs> we will have to find out. Um, however, we'll get things off today. I think we're going to go with Flash Out. I think we'll start with a bit of racing. Okay, about that? Flash Out 2. So, um, while uh, you're, you're firing that up, um, obviously I am busy looking at the chat room. Hello, everybody who's already here. We've got some regulars, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, so basically, in your chat, just say hello, uh, make yourselves known, and um, also if you have any questions about any of the games, um, then I will relay them to James as he's playing the, uh, those games. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I so this is um this is wipeout, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> definitely not wipeout. All right, no, uh, yes, basically wipeout. Yeah. Uh, so they released a version of this game uh, a year or two ago, just called Flash Out 3D. I think it was. We all looked at it and went, "Hello, that looks a little bit wipeout," and mm. it sort of blatantly is. There's no way around it. Um, I fired this one up very quickly just to switch the controls around. You can control it by uh, using the sort of tilt controls if you want to. There's a variety of different options, but as I'm streaming it and it's a bit of a pain to be trying to tilt in front of my face, I've changed it to the basic tap controls, although I've only played it for about five seconds. Uh, there is a career mode in this one. There's been a few changes, if you're familiar with the series up until now. So as you can see from the images now, there's a kind of story going on. There's some cartoony stuff. A guy is telling me to feel the adrenaline, feel the burn. Are you feeling it? Um, uh, sort of, really, but I think that might be just because I was cooking uh, tomatoes earlier and, mm -hmm. and I got burn on my finger, so but it's not How really... How do you burn tomatoes? Do you know what? Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, continue. <laughs> you totally can, all right. Um, yeah. So it's just firing up stuff and giving me my upcoming career mode trophies. So I'm going to go for the Ignite trophy, and that's the first one. It's a single race, regular race, do whatever I have to do to win, apparently, and it's set in Los Angeles. Mm. So I'm going to do that. Um... I didn't play much of the original one. I'm a huge Wipeout fan, and I did think it was ever so slightly sacrilegious, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. But it got some positive sort of responses, so I I'm curious to see how this one will fare. However, first, yeah. first thing I see is lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff about shops. It's given That's me a lot of options to buy things. Okay. Already. That's good. I love buying things. Love <laughs> Do you? Oh, good. I love it. Really, I I like buying games and then okay. having those games leave me alone. Oh, but okay. That's that's just me. Okay, so I'm sort of flying jerkily along. I'm trying to collect these little power ups, which are money. I'm trying mm. to fly over the speed boosters, which, as you know, if you've played Wipeout, you know what they are. And I can also attack folks. Um, so I can launch a bunch of rockets and or missiles and things like that. I've got what I assume is a weapon to my left here. I'm going to try and fire it just to see what happens nothing much has happened don't know if that was a weapon or not I assumed it was so it looks alright 
the frame rate's a bit herky jerky. I'll no, we should we much. should we should preface that by saying that um, by streaming from the iPad, it does sometimes hinder the 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 sort of um, technical quality of the games being run. Isn't that true? That, right? that is absolutely right. Yeah. So, some games handle it better than others. Uh, yes. Sometimes when you stream a game, because you're basically porting the image out to two different places, you're making the iPad sort of work twice as hard and sometimes it can freak out a little bit. So I am getting a lot of uh, frame rates sort of drop. I'm getting slow down when things are getting quite busy. Uh, okay. That may not be a full reflection of the game, but it's definitely it's definitely happening. Something to consider, isn't it? Um, one of the questions already is uh, Mouse Trash saying, is this freemium? Um, I See, I hadn't... I assumed it was a paid game. The first one was. But the moment it starts flashing up all this cash stuff, I... I maybe it is. I mean, you're looking at the uh, feeds and stuff, Peter. Do you know mm -hmm. if it is free to play? Have you seen? Uh, so it is not. Um, it really? Is, uh, so Flash Out Two is. Oh, according to the New Zealand App Store, it's four dollars nineteen. I think it's something wow. like two pounds ninety nine. That sort of thing, ar around that kind of mark. So a quote unquote premium. But uh, but the, uh, the, literally the first thing it did when I booted it up was say, "Do you want to buy some money?" Do you want to buy some money? I know, like uh, yeah. Disney dollars. That seems a little bit mm, iffy. I would well, say. Well, this is this is the way the games get made at the moment. So, so let's um, let let's let's think about um, uh, the the actual controls because mm -hmm. one of the things that I didn't like about the original was that it felt a little bit imprecise having to use the touch screen. Right. The, those sorts of controls. I'm one of those people who I love Wipeout and I love F Zero and I love all of those games. Yeah. And I, you know, I wish they continue doing them. But you know, this this to me felt like a uh, on paper a good approximation of a Wipeout game. Sure. Does it feel to play it? Does it feel like? Well, I mean, I'm playing at the moment using the touch controls, uh, and there is a tilt option. I had a quick go with it, which felt a little bit more natural, to be honest. Some of the tilt controls for these games can be quite good. And mm -hmm. in this case, uh, when you have a binary control, i.e. the touch controls are very on or off, then that can feel a bit jerky. You're suddenly lurching from side to side. Um, so, you know, not too bad. Um, I'm buying rockets and stuff at the moment. I've earned okay. funds from playing that last race, and I don't think I had any uh, weaponry or anything, because I was tapping it and nothing was happening. So I'm buying a couple of shields, uh, a couple of nitros, uh, some rockets... Maybe a mine or two, just just to show you how they work and and what happens. So there you go. I've bought a bunch of stuff. I'm on to the next race now, having come second in the previous one. And there you go. A lot of weaponry and stuff has appeared on the left hand side of the screen. So I've got those drop downs that I can trigger. Uh, right now, let's see if I can shoot this guy. Actually, I can't remember what the symbols mean. It uses even uses symbols just like Wipeout used to, <laughs> Ra rather than saying you know gun or whatever. It would just Did give they... you a little icon. Do you feel like they're sort of trading on that old wipeout feeling? That that sort, of, especially that PS1 era of wipeout, where it was very much like Designers Republic. Oh yeah. Is it is it is it is it trading on that or well, does it? Well, very very much so. There's no I mean, that's, that's there's no fine. way of getting around it really. I'm just launching yeah. random things. I've just launched a it's rocket. Like, that was fun. <laughs> I like Ocean Horn because it's a lot like Legend of Zelda. It is a lot like Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Again, there's no way around that. As yeah, long as you're kind yeah. of I guess as long as you're open with it. I mean, certain companies make a lot of money doing these kind of games, i.e. mobile versions of games which are available on consoles. So, for example, Gameloft is well known for making games that approximate very popular console games. So their modern warfare is, you know, the Call of Duty, and they've got uh, Gangstar Vegas, which is basically GTA, and they've made, you know, very good money out of doing that. And some people say, well, you can't get those games on mobile, and I want to play them, so why not do that? Why not, you know, have an alternative option? Other people say, hmm, little bit, perhaps, uh, imagination sort of, like, lacking slightly, and perhaps a little bit uh, cynical? you might say, um, mm. which is, again, like, an those, alternative viewpoint. Those are the sorts of people who like games that are built for those platforms, though. They're the people who like the Fruit Ninjas and the Cut the Ropes, because, you know, you can't get that kind of game anywhere else, really. Now, I've what I will up. say... Sorry to interrupt. I've blown up, and I'm just paying to respawn now. Oh, dear. Because I'm a um, hack. What I will say mm -hmm. is um, that I don't feel 
if from looking at all of your sort of like footage so far that I, I've been watching you play, I don't feel like you're doing very well. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, that's kind of true. Well, basically, I'm kind of playing with my two fingers rather than both thumbs because doing this is slightly awkward with the streaming. So, uh, yes, I am playing slightly badly, and I'm pretty much pressing all of the buttons to see what all the weapons do because we, we just we just want to see what they look like, really. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm not going to pretend to be any good at this at this point. I'm just trying to drift around and show you what it looks like. It's I'm a huge Wipeout fan, and you know a little bit of me is going, yay! It looks a little bit Wipeout, cool. But um, it is still very much an an imitator, and I don't like mm -hmm. all this cash. Every time I run over something, I'm getting cash symbols flashed at me, and I always... the the heads up as well seems extremely uh, busy. <laughs> like there are a lot of buttons on the screen. There's nearly as many buttons on the screen as there were in that recent Duke Nukem yes. game. Oh god. Oh, don't do you even. Do you don't remember? remind me of that. Oh, I, I remember all too well. Couldn't see the screen for all the buttons and over obviously the top. Obviously this isn't so bad, but it, no. it it's clearly it, it, getting there. I have to reach quite high up the screen in order to activate those uh, little buttons and get to the bombs and all that stuff, which I think might be a little bit uncomfortable on the iPad. Um, somehow I actually managed to come second during that. Or did I? One, two, oh, I've got no idea. Oh well. Um, so, uh, let's carry on to the next race. We'll do one more. Give it its give it its fair dues. We're in Tokyo, Japan this time. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not bowled over. I mean, the frame rate, it gets quite quite choppy, as you can see, and it really does slow down and um, smooth out when you go into the tunnels. So I think it might actually be part of the game rather than just the streaming, which is a little oh. bit... I mean, it might be a little bit better on the other ones, and I do know that if you happen to have an iPad, say, for example, an iPad uh, Air, or the new um, iPhone 4S, 5S, sorry. Oh, right, if you're a fancy pants, yeah. Yes, then uh, you've got that new A7 chip, and it has some special effects that only runs on the A7 chip. So I know that much. So Ooh. it will look a little bit prettier if you've got the new, new, new iOS devices. But still, mm. this is an iPad 4 I'm running on. This is a, you know, very, very new one. So it shouldn't really be suffering too much slowdown. But, you know. Oh, crikey, I'm going to get epilepsy going through that bit. Another little uh, nod to wipe out there, which had epilepsy warnings plastered all over it. I thought it was a nod to that episode of Pokemon, What Got Banned. Was there an epileptic Pokemon episode? Yeah, there, well, no, there wasn't a Pokemon that was epileptic. <laughs> there was a, there was a, a, an episode where there was a thing called a... Do you remember Porygon? It was like a virtual Pokemon. And it was uh, like a virtual Pokemon within a virtual game where you no, were playing. No, this, this sounds terribly meta. It was very meta, and um, it, it sort of hospitalised a bunch of poor children when really? they watched it. Yeah, genuinely. It's like one of those... It's one of those uh, sort of legendary video game facts. Um, but <laughs> uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was a, a, a homage to that, but clearly I'm way off. Uh, so I, I feel like I, I feel like I might give this one a go personally. I know that it's not, and it, it, it almost, it almost looks a little bit like you're drinking home, like like Sainsbury's own Coke. Other supermarkets <laughs> are available. Of, instead of Coca-Cola. Other, yeah, other than Coca-Cola, but, it's, yeah. but that's tasty enough. So, <laughs> I'm, I'll have to see. I'll need to play this a little bit more under, I don't know, more laboratory conditions. I'm mm. not entirely convinced. I wasn't convinced by the first one either. It's not that it's necessarily awful. It's had some care and attention, and it's mimicking that big neon style that the first one has, and you know, lots of jumps and spins, as you can see, and plenty of weapons from the off. I'm not sure about the money system. I always feel it's more enjoyable to just roll over pickups, which is how Wipeout used to do it. You know, you didn't buy power-ups. You had to aim for them on the track and collect them. Mm. Whereas this is you're aiming for cash and then purchasing at the beginning of every race. So that feels a little bit more perhaps contrived. I don't know. But it's okay. It doesn't look too bad. And... Uh, I, might, I might play it a bit more. I don't know. I'm not convinced. Um, Alright then, I think we'll leave this one where it is. So okay. that's Flash Out 2, uh, which is now available for... How much did you say? It was about one Oh, a couple of quid. Like if you're in New yeah. Zealand, it's $4.19. Oh, um, well, there you go then. Yeah, a couple, a but couple yeah, of quid. Three, three bucks 99 or sort of two pounds 99 That's what you'll pay for that one. Okay, we will tap out uh, of that. So let's move on to another one. What should we go for? I hmm. think... I think... 
And we'll just go like with scuba diver. We'll pop that on. I'll even put up the little scuba diver thumbnail here, which I forgot to do with Flash Out. Is this I... the one that's all very chill? Ugh. I'm going to verify my age with EA. I'm going to say I am a sprightly 19-year-old mm -hmm. for the sake of uh, television. Okay. Because I'm not going to broadcast it everywhere, whatever it is I am. I totally yeah. am 19, by the way. Stop it. I can see, I can <laughs> feel you shaking your head above me. So this one is, I assume, some kind of underwater exploratory doodad where you have to swim around and collect fishies, but not in that mean, ridiculous fishing kind of way. Mm. We'll keep things nice and local. So, scuba diver adventures. I'm in Thailand. I can use my radar to find things. White points are mission targets, so I seem I have to swim towards fish and find them. The whole story starts in Thailand, says the intro, where I had gone on an assignment to report on the victims of a plane crash. All right, we're starting off pretty jolly then. However, a surprise was waiting. The catastrophe was not sensational news. She says, no, unfortunately, the catastrophe was not sensational news. What? Unfortunately, loads of people didn't die horribly. So my news story was a bit weak. Oh, shame. Oh, this is a bit... Uh... <laughs> so weird. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, they're doing cutscene nonsense, and he gets... She's found a pirate called Eddie. Very exciting. Um, and his passion is diving, and I s presume we're going to get to some diving in a minute. He was able to... What? He was able to return me to my previous life, and in the end, I was thankful for that. She's, was she a pirate? No, I, I don't think so. I think she's finding herself or something. She's having one of those uh, eat, pray, love, Julia Roberts. Oh, I'm having a life crisis. I've got to go to a tropical island and swim with a fish. <laughs> That's basically what that film was, right? I'm sure. Yeah, I definitely watched that movie. Um, if you are just joining us at the moment, uh, I'm looking at the chat window and I'm seeing all of these lovely people coming in and saying uh, hello to us. Uh, and obviously if you've got any questions at all do let us know in the chat window and I will relay them uh, to James one of the questions that we're getting is um, when are we going to be playing Boom Beach I think we're going to push well, that a little out towards the end yeah yeah we'll get through a couple kind of first plan. and then we'll dive into Boom Beach because yeah. frankly it'll probably take the most time I haven't mm. played it myself but Peter has so been. what we're going to do is I'm going to play and he's going to kind of instruct and give me some advice because he's got a little bit more knowledge on that one but mm. don't worry we'll be getting around to it we'll be floating oh, around for the next probably hour or so just going through these games so uh, oh I think I think it's on we're about oh. to do some actual okay. diving now okay that's exciting. She's. This is all tied up in some kind of plot uh, about finding what happened to her father or something. But let's be honest. We're just going to swim around and look at fish, aren't we? Oh, I love that. I, I, I. Have you ever played any other diving games at all? Have you Have you played Deep Blue? I think was it called Deep Blue or Ocean's Dream or Diver's Dream or the something? The only one like... I ever played. There was a, like a beta release of a game that uh, we got to test out on our PCs. They sent us some code. I can't even remember what it was called, but it literally was just wandering around the bottom of the sea, like prodding sharks and flicking eels. Oh, they around. wouldn't like that. They wouldn't like that at all. Okay, so during each dive, you'll spend a single oxygen tank, which can be f refilled at the shop or wait some time. Okay, so clearly this is a free-to-play game uh, in which you have to top up using an energy system so my first mission is to search the plane here we go i've got to press the action button to pick things up which allows me to collect golden coins which will give me xp and coins which i can spend later on so the action button's in the bottom right hand corner i've just tapped that with my hand and there we go to choose what direction to move in use the right side of the screen so there we go i'm rotating my view with the uh, my right finger there and i can use the lower left hand part to move so it's essentially kind of the virtual stick setup. I'm going to actually pick the iPad up for this. Otherwise, it's going to be a right pain in the ass to control. So here we go. I'm exploring the bottom of the ocean. And it looks kind of cool, actually. My first task is to get to the sunken plane. Mm. I'm being communicated with via radio. I've got a little indication marker here telling me how far the plane is from me. And so I'm going to head straight towards that. I'm going at full speed at the moment, and hey, it's it's kind of pretty. Mm. Do you know, one of the things that was being said in the chat was that the game looked kind of naff, and I was completely in agreement <laughs> until, we just, until we just went underwater. Yeah, agreed. So, uh, hello, I've got to do a thing. Oh, here we go. Now it's sped up. Now we're talking. I thought we were going a bit slowly. I've just activated the little uh, scooter propeller-powered thing. I don't know what you call it. 
um, whatever it is, the skiv, the underwater skiv, and so I'm mm. now rocketing along to the air, the crashed aircraft, and oh, it looks quite cool actually, check it out. Mm. Hey, not bad. This is reminding me a little bit of those moments in Uncharted. So an indicator shows me coins that I've collected and I'll be able to spend in the store. You can see the coins up on the top there. There's a whole bunch of currencies. So right, I've reached the plane and I now have to find the black box. Don't know where that is. Let's do a little recce. I found the area around the plane. Your task is to find the black box. Don't forget to check inside the plane. And even though it's called a black box, apparently it looks like an orange ball because people like to confuse the hell out of uh, other people. Hmm. Right, so, ooh. Hey, this looks kind of cool. I, I quite like the look of this, actually. You're right, it looks kind of naff, and all those energy systems and currencies at the top are worrying me, I will admit, but I'm going to ditch the little schooner, and I'm going to go inside. Oh, can I? Can I go inside? Can I open this little door? Try to find the black box near the plane. This game is beautiful. Like, genuinely. It doesn't look too, doesn't look too mad. Our um, our community manager, Caffeine Dream, is in the chat at the moment. He was saying this looks like Aquanauts Holiday. That is the game it absolutely does look uh, like. Right, okay. Um, and uh, I'm 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 absolutely stunned at how good this looks. Okay, it, it does look good. I've completed my first mission, and it, uh, it's asking me whether I want to go to the boat and take the next one, which I'll do. So I got to the plane. The black box isn't nearby. Uh, I've now got to go and search it. So now I've got to go to this cave that I've discovered nearby. Here we go. Look around the cave and find the black box. I'm on it. Let's get on the little scooter and zoom cool. in. Mm -hmm. mm. So I'm thinking that this is quite a kind of gently paced, exploratory, you know, almost hidden object game to some, some degree. Um, I suppose so. You can use the radar to find the black box. White dots will appear as mission targets. Oh, here we go. I've got the alien-style scanner that I've just pulled up. The white dot is my target, so I can clearly see one there. Question is, how do I get through this cave to get to it? Right, I'm going to push slowly forward. I'm going to reach a dead end if I'm not careful. I'm kind of in a little cul-de-sac here. Oh, hello. Let's go under there. That looks cool. I'm going to bust out the uh, little schooner sub thing. Go through the caves. This is cool. Yeah, so... If you like those very gently paced, mellow games in which you kind of explore at your own speed and you're not being attacked constantly by dudes with guns, then this might well be the kind of relaxing thing uh, that you might like. But how relaxing can it be when you've got a limited air supply? <laughs> oh, I've got a limited air supply? I didn't even notice that. If you look at the top left... Oh, yeah. A... Yeah. Damn, okay. I was maybe being a bit too casual about it, or perhaps we're under a great deal of pressure. <laughs> In that case, panic! Panic! Bust now, out the schooner! One thing that is very reassuring is that there isn't a giant plus button next to your air. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I do they're like not, that. They're not going so far as to say, Oh, you want to buy more air, do you? Well, we're going to suffocate you till you give us money. <laughs> I'm going to put that away for a second. Uh, ooh, hello. I want to use the action button to pick up that thing, which I have. Good. Uh, ooh Monkey says, is that a Wii U controller you're using underwater? And uh, <laughs> ve they're very glad that we found a use for them. <laughs> so I think most, most Wii U controllers have been thrown into the ocean now, haven't they? It's, uh, By this point, well, well along naughty. with the Wii U's themselves. A bit harsh, naughty. but, naughty. you know. Oh, hello. I think we ooh. may have found something. I think okay. I found it. Flight 96. Flight recorder. It's just occurred to me that I'm underwater looking for a crashed aircraft, which, topically speaking, could be considered a bit insensitive. It might, yeah. If, this... if you follow the news, but I don't think that was deliberate. No, of course not. I mean, this game will have been in development right. months and months and months, but certainly. Okay, so I've got to attach lift bags to the black box so I can lift it up off the bottom of the sea. How I do that, uh, I've got no idea. So I can lift up the load from the surface or. I need to use lift bags. So the question is, since you're just learning, here are 30 gold things to buy some lift bags. So I'm having to buy items in order to do this. It's not a natural part of the gameplay. Mm. All right, well, I've just bought some lift bags. I can now press that Wii button there. It's brought up my inventory. Where I've got a compass and a watch and other things. Tap the lift bag. I'm going to tap the, uh, oh, the item and bam. It's been... Uh, Attached via a string, which has made it more buoyant, and I can now push it towards the cave opening. So I've got to kind of swim up and 
actually smash into the thing to try and push it towards that gap that's in the top of the cave. Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm kind of pushing it down now. I'm thinking maybe I should be using the little schoonery thing, but I'm not sure. I think I'll just push manually. Easy does it. Whoa, there. Okay, we're making progress. Here it goes. Here we go. Yeah, you are kind of coming down to a half tank of air yeah, now. That's all right. It's all right. I've got it through the opening, the first gap. It is heading up. I'm going to grab my little speedo thing. Meow. <laughs> I shouldn't really need to make sound effects, but I can never hear the sounds when I play this game, if, as regular viewers will know, when we're doing streaming, so I have to make my own noises. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just confusing the stream. But I'm There's just a space battle going on. Yeah, probably. I'm just following it up now, and I think, strong current, on your way back, follow the same route. Whoa, okay. whoa. My scooter's run out of battery. Would I like to recharge it for two diamonds? Oh my, really? Yay! Really? Well, I'm going to do it for the sake of this, uh, but like, so I've successfully gotten it out the, the um, top of the cave, and I must yeah. now go back the way I came. Oh, mission complete. Do I want to return the boat and take the next mission? Okay, but we are going to move on after this. So this, that, that shows you a little bit of what it looks like, I guess. Scuba Diver Adventures Beyond the Depths looks a bit free to play to me. Is it free to play or is it? It is free to play. Okay, yes, I can well, confirm that it is free to play. There um, you go. So you can spend a whole bunch of currencies to get more stuff. If you're willing to spend the time on it, it might be fun. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like all the pop-ups asking me for money, personally. But that's just me. We'll leave that where it is and you can judge it for yourself. Uh, next up, let's do Clark. This all looks right. kind of fun to me. Uh, Have we we'll asked change... Clark's permission? Or... No. Oh, no. Right. He's going to run with it. It's a yeah. little crazy robot thing. I'm, it's a kind of an isometric top-down view. I'm not 100% sure on what the actual gameplay is, but I'm kind of keen to find out because it looked an awful like board, lot like Borderlands in its, it's art of, style. It's a lot of games looking like other games today. <laughs> well, far be it from me to say there's a lack of creativity. But no, it's there were lots of cel-shaded games before Borderlands was ever yes, created. Yes, absolutely. So it, it's fair enough. And... To be fair, it's a really nice looking style. The cell shaded thing is great, and this already from the little cutscene I'm looking at now, it looks good. It's pretty. It's a good look. I like it. Um, things are falling apart. I'm on a, I'm in a kind of valley on in a city by the looks of it. Um, this is clearly a near future thing. I don't know what colony I'm on, but I'm going about to take control of the little guy. Here he is. Oh, he looks cool. He's kind of like a little quadruped Wally. He's a maintenance robot. And apparently something needs fixing. And I'm the man to fix it. So I'm mm -hmm. holding it with both hands, like it says. Hold the left thumb to walk. Oh, look at him go. Oh, cool. All right, so he kind of moves a block at a time. If I just tap it, he does one forward movement. Do jump, jump like that. Or I can hold it in order to make him walk further. And if I swipe the left thumb, that changes his direction by 90 degrees. So I'm, I'm moving around this isometric area and changing his uh, orientation by just flipping. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Uh, already, having played these other two games, like the difference in frame rate is astonishing. Suddenly it's mm. a really smooth run. Um, oh, I've been met by other guys. There are more dudes. Other robots. I don't know if they're friendly or they're going to kick my ass. Apparently the energy's down and we got no music anymore. They're complaining about having no power to party. Which is a thing robots do. Apparently. No Power to Party is the name of my Electro album that I'm releasing soon. Are there... <laughs> I look forward to it on Bandcamp. Um, I think alien references are being made made here. They're referring to Excellent. an overall computer called Father, which is a nod to the computer Mother in, in Aliens. Uh, and also, they called in Alien Resurrection, they called the ship Father as a nod to the previous games as well. Hmm. That's a sci-fi fact for you there. Hmm. That was, a bit, that was a bit nerdy. That was a bit of a nerdy detail. Thank you. Yeah. I've, got, I've got no idea how to actually get any further now, because they appear to have wandered off, the little buggers. Okay. So I'm going to move around and see if there's another way to go. Let's go well, this way. While you're figuring that out, I will say hello, everybody that is joining us at the moment. Uh, I'm looking at the chat room at the moment and uh, looking for questions from you guys to ask James while he's playing the game if you've got any questions about the game and uh, how it's playing and, and what it feels like then pop them in the chat room and I will convey them uh, 
totes. <laughs> right, I'm talking to Rockets now. He's a very personable little guy, this okay. robot, uh, and he's chatting to everybody. Uh, this rocket appears to be perhaps stuck or something. I can uh, touch the button on the bottom right-hand corner, and uh, that gives me the way to speak to them and lets me offer them advice, or them offer me advice. Uh, so I've got to go and find some switches in order to release this rocket. So I'm going to move around. Um, first thing, I'm going to say that this... Oh, I can pick it up and put it down. Mm. This controls really nicely. This is very, very intuitive. Like, I'm just very easily just swiping left and right uh, with my right thumb just to spin the screen around like I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and very naturally moving the other controls just operating with the right thumb. And it's it's easy. I don't feel like I'm encountering any issues whatsoever. Um, I will point out here, though, that I've had to pick this square up, but it means that I now can't spin it round without making a few adjustments. Oh, this is mm. interesting. I have to kind of guide the thing out because, look, I can't spin round now because I'm kind of backed myself into a little corner almost. So I need to move back out here. Let's see if I can do it this way. I can't spin that round. I can do that though. Let's back him out. Can I get round here? If I put it down? No, I can't. Oh, this is interesting. What I can do is I can move it onto here. That activates another door. Move forward. Grab this one as well. And mosey on up this way. I'm following these little yellow uh, trails, these yellow lines that are uh, pointing me in the right direction. However, when I'm holding the device by a kind of tractor beam thing, it does affect the way in which I can move around the screen. Uh, I can't swing it around because I'll smash into an object or something. So I have to be careful how I... I have to pick it up and put it down again and maneuver it into the right position. So there's kind of a lot of positional play going on. Like mm -hmm. here, I've put it down, but now it's blocking my way. So I need to pick it back up and I assume kind of work out a way of angling it into the right position. So if I go out here and if I reverse, spin it round and then walk backwards over it, then I can get and open the door. Nice. nice. Yeah, this is good. Problem solving. So Tadius is asking... Uh, well, is saying that it, it's making them feel dizzy. <laughs> well, the all the spinning, all the flipping about, and the spinning, that sort of thing, is making me feel a little bit. Um, so this is, so I think that's a that's a thing, definitely. That uh, I want to know whether or not you feel is a problem. I'm okay. And, it feels all yeah. right to me. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not too bad. Um, I'm now being congratulated by the little rocket, uh, and hopefully I can. I need to find something to put on the switch. So I've activated all the other switches, and it's showing me now that there's a spare block which I need to get to. Um, question is, how am I going to get to it? I can stand on this, but that's not good enough. Let's go over here. Oh, level complete. That's it. So my next mission, presumably, will be grabbing that little block. I'm liking this. This is the most fun I've had so far today. Uh, just because the controls are very intuitive, the frame rate's really consistent, it's a lovely look, it looks great, and the mm, gameplay really is does. slightly different. So I'm grabbing so this block. So, instant reactions from you. Uh, Clark is £2.99, $4.99, according to uh, one of the stories that we've got. Is okay. this... does that sound... that sounds about right to you, maybe? That sounds okay. I mean, it looks certainly looks very classy. I'll mm. give it that. It's a classy-looking uh, production. And obviously looks certainly aren't everything. But the fact that it controls the way that it does as well. I mean, I'm immediately kind of engaged. I immediately understand the way that the world works. And it's immediately kind of, I don't know, fun. I'm, I'm curious, like, which perhaps with the other ones... Not so much. I mean, it's because those ones are known quantities, aren't they? Like sure, you, sure. Can, you can play that for five minutes, and and that, I mean that's the reason that we do these streams. You know, it's mm. that thing of you can look at it, you can see it in motion, and you pretty much get the idea of what this is. Absolutely. But with this, it, it definitely feels a little bit more. Hmm. What's a, what's a good word for it? I would say, I don't know. Uh, like surprising. Well, yeah, this is slightly unusual. I've, hmm. I don't know how to... Because it's an isometric... These isometric games are usually, to be quite honest with you, you see them used for mostly things like RPGs, action RPGs like Diablo, that sort of mm. thing. You're controlling characters, large groups, and you're going around attacking people and doing all that. This is certainly not that. Clearly this is a puzzle-based game, logic puzzle-based game. Um, oh, wow. Hello, I've just walked into a room and accidentally activated an awful lot of lasers. I have uh, to move carefully. I hate it now. when that happens. I know, I know. It's it's what you get for buying these high-end security systems. And then you wake up at the night to make a grilled cheese sandwich, and all of a sudden, you know, you've lopped your foot off with a laser beam. Nightmare. 
Right, so I've got a load of blocks now. I've got to work out which one I need to put down first. Eek! This is tricky. Um, ooh, ah, urgh. I don't want to smash myself in the face here, but I might do. Oh, hang on, I know how to do this. Yes, I do. I'm going to clear this one out the way. Not that far out of the way, too far. Can I spin? Yes, I can. Brilliant. Then I'm going to waddle around the perimeter and put this one on this block. Boom. Then we need to lift this block up here. And if I can reverse that round... Ooh, no, that's going to be... That's going to be tough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Ooh, uh, I don't want to back myself into a corner. Can I get round the... Oh, hello, hello. Yes. I've had, a, I've had a sudden flash of inspiration. If I move that up there, put that down there. Grab uh... this one instead. Oops, missed. Put that one down there. Then I can go around and whack this second one on there to replace it. And then finally go back and grab this one. I think you made this out to be harder than it actually is. Hey, no, what, shut up. Just <laughs> that that was a challenge. I, I successfully did a thing there. That was You, you saw it, mm. internet, didn't you? It was well good. Mm. I am, I'm a ledge. Right. Impressed. Here we go. And now I'm going to activate the thing. And there we go. I have launched this little pink missile. And it's now floating very slowly towards what I presume is a launching point. He's now asking his little name. Well, what's your name? Um, it doesn't matter, because he's going to have exploded in a minute. She's called Clara. Oh, mm. he's flirting with a rocket. Oh, hello. I know, right? It's getting well, a little bit... Uh... Trying to find out whether he'll see him again. Oh, it's that tragic story. You've all heard it before, of the love between a small maintenance droid and a nuclear warhead. How yeah. many <laughs> times have we heard it? Depends how often you go on DeviantArt. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Just to warn you, you've got a little bit robotic on the stream there. Uh, don't okay. worry about that. Peter is currently in Bristol. I'm down in Bournemouth. We do these things remotely. It's a big, mad coordination satellite beaming effort. Uh, but it generally works out okay. I have completed yeah. the level. First level done. Uh, I liked that. That was fun. I'm genuinely interested. Po problem solving. Really well presented. Um, kind of cute, endearing, you know, it's got a little bit of Wally in it, clearly, the Pixar mm -hmm. movie Wally. There's that, you know, you're a cutesy little maintenance droid running around doing your thing. Definitely an element of that involved. Um, and the controls are very intuitive, very smart. They don't feel kind of crippled on an iPhone uh, like sometimes these things do. Uh, it's very, very intuitive rotating the screen around, whether it makes you motion sick or not is something <laughs> slightly different. But... I'm giving this uh, high initial reactions. I'm rating this. Look at all these dancing, dancing robots, people. Come on, this is brilliant. How can you possibly go wrong? <laughs> this is awesome. Right, I'm going to tap out of this right now, but that's Clark. Um, I'm excited. I'm going to review this on App Spy uh, later, and I think that was, oh, that could be sweet. That's the next. Okay. All right, then. Okay. Moving on. Uh, we're going to go on to quickly have a look at Cabin Escape. I'm going to boot it up right now. Okay. Now, have I transformed out of being a robot? You are now in fully human form, Peter. Uh, you're, you're fantastic. You're looking, looking and sounding all I right. Found, I found my heart. Um, <laughs> I learnt to love. Exactly. It was, a, it was a whole thing. Okay. So, what this is, is a prologue adventure to uh, Forever Lost, I think it's called. I think that's what it's called. Which is a point-and-click adventure game. Uh, sort of slightly spooky, eerie, you wake up in a place, you don't know where anything is, uh, and you have to find your way out. Um, I'm now just tapping on the areas of the screen to investigate what's going on. So it's that classic point-and-click sort of thing. I've tapped this object on the table, and it's pulled up what looks like a solitaire. Yeah, it is a solitaire uh, screen. Apparently the girls never had patience for it. Uh, I'm going to back out right now, and I'm just going to tap random objects to see what's in there. I've opened the drawer. There's a magazine in there called Size Matters for people who liked different sized things. Okay. Mm. Moving on. Um, mm. uh, I've got a camera here which with, with which I can take photographs of objects. I'm going to tap the camera now. There we go. It's taken a photograph of it. Presumably so you can go back and reference that information later when you're trying to solve a puzzle or, or something like that. My name is Alice, uh, and I'm looking for a way out of this building. Uh, I've also got making reference to a character called Jason, who I know is existing in the previous games. This is a prologue, so you know you're getting a little before all this happened. The events that led up to the events you see in Forever Lost. Um, 
let's go back out and have a look at a different area. So I'm going to go over here. There is a painting on the wall. Jason and I like to visit Lake Solomon every year. I get the impression these two are a couple. Uh, oh, I've got a letter. Dear Alice, I've left you this child-friendly cleaning fluid to use on the children's hands once you've finished finger painting. One cap is all you need. Okay, Jason. Thanks. Um, right, so I've taken up the bottle lid, which has got the cleaning fluid in, so presumably there'll be something I need to use cleaning fluid on at some point. Ooh, that sounds, uh, right. sounds like thrilling video games action. Um, <laughs> obviously, if you are joining us... Uh, right now, then, I'm looking at the chat room. I'm seeing all of your fantastic things that you're saying. Uh, don't worry, guys. You don't need to buy me a new router. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> nice to ask. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. it's lovely. Um, the uh, one person has said, ah, Ooh Monkey said, um, you know, this is two weeks in a row that we've had Size Matters references. Uh, we had it on the podcast and uh, just oh, yeah. now. Um, so, yes, our, our jokes are getting uh, tiring and boring. That's not my uh, joke. They, they said it. I accept uh, no responsibility I'm, for I'm this. I'm blaming you 100% on this one. And uh, uh, somebody else has asked whether or not we're going to be doing uh, another video podcast at some point. That is very much up in the air. I wanted to answer that because we've mm. had a lot of questions about that. We had a couple of emails, actually. Yeah. Um, we are thinking about it. So... So that, that's kind of like the most that we can tell you at the moment. Um, so like I say, anyway, I am looking at the chat. I'm looking at all of your hilarious stuff. And um, yeah, so if you've got any questions for James, then um, do ask away and I will relay them as fast as I possibly can. Well, I, I've pressed a, a thing. I've just found a little device and it started lighting things up. Uh, I, I don't quite know. I think it's like one of those Simon Says machines. So it's like got to remember the number pattern. So there, 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 there. There, 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 there. Did I do that right? I did do it right! And yeah. it's given me a key. Check Brilliant. it out. Um, so it's reminding me a little bit, obviously, the previous games, but if you think about things like The Room, if you played that, where it's a puzzle game mm. in which you have to manipulate objects in order to open stuff up. However, I'm going to say that, in terms of presentation, doesn't really stand up to The Room, because... Oh, I, I think this looks really good. Do you, do you not like it? Well, it's I mean, the the still shots are fine, but it is just a series of still shots. There's no animation, there's no movement. I just like you know, it opens up the drawer with a key in, and you just get boom, picture of a key, which is fine. That's standard for these kind of games, but it's certainly not mm, particularly slick in in that regard. Um, so yeah. Something's telling me to use a hammer on the box, so I obviously have to go and find a hammer somewhere. I should say at this point, this is free to download. This is a free uh, episode that sits, I think, between... Free? I know. It sits between episodes two and three of the Forever Lost story. Ah. So it's not necessarily supposed to act as an entire story all by itself. Uh, and perhaps, you know, we shouldn't necessarily expect too much from it in terms of either length or production values. But you're right, the, the individual pictures look fine. I'm going to investigate these tablets. Oh dear. Mm. Looks like Alice takes a lot of pills. She hated taking them, so she dumped them in the stream outside. Where Jason was at work. He's been spending a lot more time in the lab these past months. I assume this is all foreshadowing stuff of her waking up uh, with amnesia like all these people do. Oh look! Picked up some marbles. Clearly they are there for the solitaire, uh, which we had to do before. I'm probably not going to do it, though, because I simply can't be asked. Let's go and have a look at this <laughs> typewriter. I remember buying this for Jason. Or at least, I think I do. Well, make up your mind. She's going a bit uh, best of times, worst of times with this. I remember buying it, but maybe I don't remember. I don't really know. Here's a chest which I can enter a five-digit code. Don't know what that is. That's probably exciting. Here's a, here's a thing with lots of green things on it. Ooh, I'm pressing them, and they're changing colour. That's exciting. And now they're changing colour again. Ooh, ooh, lots of different colours. So I assume one has to find a pattern that will allow me to then open this box. So mm. you'll have to go and find somewhere else. Oh, here we've got another pattern recognition thing. I'm just pressing these randomly at the moment. But as you can see, they're making the little wooden tablets darker. Again, need to go away and find something that's actually got a key code on it or something so I can unlock and find out what to press. I got some paper, though, and an ink blotter. And I've got a computer to into which I should enter a password. All right. And this door has got a bunch of fingerprint things on it. I'm pressing the fingerprints. One, two, three, at the same time. And it's just making numbers appear. So again, I have to enter a code or something for that. All right. I think I'm going to leave that there. I realize that was quite a quick look. 
but it's not that kind of game. It's know, also quite a short game, as far as like as far yeah. as I'm concerned, because it is a it is a, a freebie for the fans of exactly. uh, of the games already. So. And I don't want to start solving the puzzles and then ruin it, basically. Yeah. So yeah. you can see what it looks like. It's free to download if you want to. Uh, no harm in trying. Cabin's Escape Alice's Story. That uh, will be available. I think that's available right now. All the rest of these games I should mention they're going to be available in about 24 hours. Technically at midnight tonight they will become available in the UK and the US. So don't. Try Try and download them right now because you won't be able. Because you won't be able to. Not no. all of them. Sorry. Um. So we've got what three games remaining? Yeah, now? Yeah, we may motor through them because mm. we're sort of running out of time. I'm gonna do. Uh, you die. Sometimes you die. It's cool. Oh, okay, right. Yes. Which is not a threat. Just a th just, just, just a fact. Say, just, really. Yeah. That's just what happens. This, from what I've seen of the uh, preview footage, is a quite intense little platformer, mini platformer in which you have to use blocks, which I'm going to control now, and basically kill them a lot. So, here we go, they just dumped me right into it. Uh, I am taking control of this block, I'm using the arrows in the bottom left hand side of the screen to move them around, and I'm tapping the right hand corner to jump. Apparently this block is gifted with a, a jumping ability. He can't wall jump though, so sod him. I've got, <laughs> I've got text appearing. Who Let can't wall jump now? In a I know, right? Block. Come on. Uh, I've smashed, I'm smashing uh, the light just to see what it does, and it's making... Stuff blink. Oh, now I've knocked it up onto that ledge. How oh, well. What are you doing, it says. Uh, apparently my oxygen has just been restored in Scuba Diver. Thank goodness. Thank goodness Whee! for pop-up alerts, right? Okay. So, what are you doing? I'm sometimes playing this game. You have to die. Me, we take it for granted that you revive lost lives. It's like telling me stuff in the background. This is acting as kind of a tutorial just to navigate through this maze. Which I quite like because it's not telling me how to do it. It's letting you sort of get on and find out for yourself. Now I'm going to try and jump this gap. I may not make it. Oh, I totally made it. It's all good. Now I'm trying to jump these gaps. Oh, and I've just fallen into the hole. However, a new block has immediately appeared behind me. Which is okay. Oh, I'm on a lift now. So, it's... A typically indie, lo-fi, noodly looking platform, which mm -hmm. have become extremely popular uh, of late. Whoops, a daisy jumped off that. Damn, this is actually a little bit trickier than I thought. There we go. Well, sometimes you die. This is true. And there are spikes appearing, which I have to avoid. Now, this bit, so he's, it's highlighted a different bit of text here. In this game, death can be useful. So, I don't think I can clear this jump. In fact, I almost definitely can't. However, I might be able to... Oh, I can clear it. But <laughs> from what I've seen of the preview stuff, I can use other characters if I die a bunch of times. Oh, hello, I'm stuck in the ceiling. Then that can actually be a benefit to me. However, this isn't a benefit at all because I'm stuck in the ceiling and I can't get out. I can't jump out or get down. Is this deliberate or is this a bug? Mm. Let me refresh. There we go. i have just refreshed again and... I'm constantly flying up to the ceiling. This strikes me as a terrible game-ending bug. Oh dear. Let's try. Let's keep trying. Indie game developers. <laughs> hey, this is why we do this stuff. We've got to find it. We've got to test it for you. And apparently, we've got a bit of an issue here. I'm just floating up to the ceiling a million times. Oh, oh dear. Right, how much can we break this thing? <laughs> Let's go. A lot. I've oh, yeah. clearly broken it. So it's yep. it's obviously not supposed to do that. The gravity's become inverted and gone a bit weird. Uh, so let's tap out of that, and I'm going to launch into something. I'll fire scuba diver back up for a second, which will hopefully wipe the other one out. And let's go back into you die and see if it's... That's what happens when you go live, live, live. Exactly. Nope, can't get around it. Okay, well, that's that then. I'm going to move on to a different game. I'm going to have a little, little look at Little Big Adventure. All right, let's move on. So, uh, Sometimes You Die, Died. Never was a title more prophetic than that one. So, oh. do you remember this? Little Big Adventure? Yes, it was in the 90s, and it was a PC point-and-click adventure game that was very, very popular at the time. S yes, I remember picking up a copy of 
I want to say it was PC format back in the day, like literally wow. 95, 96. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, because uh, I went back and uh, uh, reread it the other day when I was getting rid of a load of magazines. I remember looking at the scr uh, like screens and thinking, this is incredible. Mm. And um, I, as I say, I reread it the other day and, and it said, like, look at these incredible screenshots. <laughs> look I at know. the amazing 3D worlds. And. Um, Time hasn't been kind, has it? No. Well, there are certain games that age very well. Pixel art has become incredibly popular recently, where now lots of indie designers are deliberately making their games look retro, try and emulate the style of 8-bit games and 16-bit games uh, from the late 80s and early 90s. However, when that changeover came, when things started going 3D, those games, they translate less well. I would say. Mm -hmm. So if you go back and look at the very, very first Tekken or something like that, then it looks a bit iffy. And, uh, oh, hello. Right, so I'm f spawned now into this world. Uh, a guy is floating on a platform over, presumably, to talk to me. Here he is. Uh, stop squirming, prisoner Twinson. So I'm a prisoner that's stuck. I can apparently attack NPCs by double tapping on them. Which, I guess, as it's just told me to do that, I probably should. I'm tapping him once. I've talked to him. He's saying I've been held here because I'm a troublemaker. Well, you're uh, He's right. Well, I, I haven't done anything yet. Apparently, we're going to dissect him. Oh, I mean, take care of him. And then he battered me and floated off. Right, I'm going to double tap him and batter him. Come on, man. Yes, I kicked his ass and he exploded into a coin. Which, as we know from both computer games and life, is totally what happens. Mm, mm. So, let's move around the screen. So I'm tapping different areas of the screen and that's causing him to wander about. It certainly looks old. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, it does. Right. Oh, that dude. platform is now coming back. Having knocked Matey off of the uh, platform, hopefully, when it touches down, I can then step on it and it'll carry me away. Right. Go, man. Go. Go. There it is. Brilliant. I say I'm tapping on areas and it's not walking exactly to the point where I tap. That's what I'm getting immediately. Um, however, I'm floating across the surface. I did. I wrote up a story about this earlier on today, and I understand that some of the trickier elements of the game, for example, some of the platforming sections and things like that, have been altered because they probably wouldn't work as well on a touch screen. So they have made some concessions. However, I'm now being legged at by one of these guys. So I'm going to double tap. I'm going to kick his ass. Same with yep. this one over here. Another scientist. Yep. Boom. Kicked him in the face, and I've got a key. Keys are good. He's doing a little dance. He seems very, very happy. Hmm. So a uh, little bit of tri trivia from Apps by regular Hans Kauzo here. In America, this was called Relentless Twinsons Adventure. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Which well, is the worst name. Well, I, it, it made me curious because obviously this is called Little Big Adventure. And as we all know, very popular franchise called Little Big Planet. And Never I wonder if, if that was a reference to this in the first place because obviously this came first. So... Mm. Um, hello, I think I've got in the way of this floating platform again. Move, move. Oh, wow, this is definitely from the 90s. Yeah, 90s awkward, gaming. Slightly awkward controls, uh, partially scrolling screen, isometric views, uh, waddling Does it have character. Does control support? Uh, I don't do know. Think? I've got no idea. I haven't got a controller. Mm -hmm. I will, so I I will do some it. research on uh, the internet. You do that. I'm just exploring Happy. the perimeter. Uh, of the area here because I've got to look for somewhere to put that key. I couldn't activate any of the buttons that were up the top so I'm just going to skirt around the edges and see what we can find. Now this isn't free to play, this is a premium release and presumably it's going to be cashing in on the kind of nostalgia that we were talking about earlier, that sort of 16-bit nostalgia which people love and presumably there are going to be a lot of people who are fans of this game from when it first came out and there's a part of you that kind of wants to go ahead and recapture some of that you know, past glory. Mm. For two pounds forty nine, three dollars <laughs> ninety nine. Exactly, like, exactly. Which, which actually is, for this game when it came out was forty quid, fifty quid. You know, let's let's not beat around the bush here. Like, yeah, yeah. This is a a re release of an old game that some people are going to want to play because sure. they have those those fond memories. So, according to uh, the information that I found, it's also going to be available on Whisper. Uh, what? Which, Who, where? Where? Um, it's an Android it's spy. So it's also... <laughs> um, <laughs> it's an Android counter spy. And uh, 
as far as I can tell, it doesn't have controller support on iOS. The but it is obviously from Dot Emu, and I think I I don't want to speak Ooh. for you, but I think we both quite like Dot Emu. They do a good job generally. Yeah, yeah, games. yeah. They're okay. I'm hopping back on this little transport because I can't seem to be able to find anything useful up there. I've got a key, and I'm not entirely sure how to use it. Um, this is taking me back to the original hole I was in. I don't think there's an object in that other place, though. I don't want to hop off and just get stranded in this cell again. It's showing me that I can jump quite weirdly by putting my finger on the screen, on the character, and then moving my finger along, just dragging it, and then letting go, and it will cause him to leap. So, uh, Mick Theant has some advice for you. Go through the black door on the left with the key. Have you done that? Oh, really? Will that work? Because was... it looks like a grill, but it doesn't look like there's anywhere to put the key in. However, mm. if he has played this before, maybe he knows what he's talking about. See, I can't see a keyhole. Oh, no, I've just wandered up to it and activated it. Good call. Mm. I was well, waiting for the, some kind of object. Or Mick or... the Ant. I'm I, keep, I keep putting all names together because I'm used to the way that new web 3.0 puts names together, you know? Like .emu. Like, oh, right, one, yeah, yeah. It, like, you know? Uh, so it's probably Bam. Mick the Ant. Whoa, yeah. whoa. There's oh, a God. gigantic oh. elephant creature standing in the corner. And uh, well, something weird's happening to my guy. He's being slapped. It looks like I've been caught. Whoa, what a weird cutscene. Apparently, I better get a disguise before going any further. I've got to remember mm. to retrieve stuff from a locker. And it's cast me back to the beginning. Wow. Screw you, it says. So, clearly, you have to make this prison break in kind of one concise movement uh, without getting smashed and bogged down or captured by random elephants, apparently. How weird. All right, then. Well, that's available right now. Little Big Adventure, Dot Emu. Uh, you said a couple of quid. That'll cost you. Mm -hmm. um, that leaves... Well, that leaves one thing, I suppose. I'm, just, I'm going to quickly check on you, die, just to make sure I'm still stuck in the ceiling. If you if you double if you double tap your thing, you can flick away the totally stuck can, in the ceiling. You can flick away the game, can't you? If you double tap the oh right, uh, yeah yeah sorry if I do all this can flip stuff, I can whoopa let's get rid of it. Cast in this try. Oh, I don't, don't want to go back to the beginning again. That's all because we're nearly out of time. Oh, we'll screw it. We'll have to have a look at you die later because I'll put up yeah. a preview video on App Spy itself. All of this, I should say, uh, will be reviewed on App Spy and we'll give you hands on videos as well. So if you go to AppSpy.com via the links in the Twitch feed below, you can see everything that you know we put up on the site and it'll all be covered there. So I guess we move on to the last thing and I'm going to need your assistance for this one, Peter. Yes, you will now. Boom Imme beach. Immediately. Boom. Boom beach. <laughs> um, immediately, I will give you the advice of take everything very slowly. Because okay. it does differ from Clash of Clans, which is clearly the elephant in the room that isn't in Little Big Adventure. It, the Yee. Little Big Adventure elephant's come over, and now he's in the room with us right now. Gotcha. Yeah, it was a joke. And it was hilarious as well. We all laughed. But, and uh, the... Yes, so... I feel like everybody's going to compare this game to Clash of Clans. And uh, well, that's reasonable. It is reasonable. <laughs> and I would also say that there, it does have significant differences as well. Really? Um, it's very much more a tactical game. And I know that some Clash of Clans fiends uh, will be very upset with me saying that, but it is far more strategic than... Uh, clash, I would right. say. So I'm having a little look here. Uh, it's just asking me to build a sniper tower as my first thing. I've been dumped Both, on a right. beach. This is a far more militaristic adventure than Clash of Clans, whereas that's set in this kind of Viking land with Nordic gods and all that. This mm. is the military. So uh, I've just been given the option to build this tower. Can I move it around a bit? I can't seem to move it around. So I'm just going to say yes. It's built a sniper tower at level one. Now it's boom, there it is, it's done. And I've got to look out for enemy ships, which are apparently approaching. Mm-hmm. So I've now been introduced to Lieutenant Hammerman of the Black Guard. Yeah, he, um... Yeah, they're not good. They're not nice. <laughs> they're the okay. baddies. All right, then. So I can now... It says, let's hope the sniper could hold off the attack and has now given me the option to watch the fight. Yeah, so it's now it. gone into a letterbox format and I just have to watch while the battle plays out automatically. Yes. Now that's... That's what you would also usually be doing in, in Clash of Clans, yeah, right? Yeah. You you create a base and you create a way to defend it, and then hopefully your it's much like tower defense actually in that way. Mm. Hopefully those towers will defend you from the attack. Which they have. 
Yes. That's good to see. Well, apparently I've got to get a strike force ready, presumably to launch glorious retaliation for the uh, island of Appsby. Mm. So that's my gunboat, and that's my little landing craft. Now I've got to add some people to put into the landing craft, I see. I can buy a basic trooper type. I can't get any of the other guys, so you've got level 2 headquarters required to get all these other troops. So I'm just going to buy five of them, and that's giving me a little countdown timer, and they're appearing on my little landing craft. So, that's been stocked, and I need to another landing craft to get a strong enough strike force. So, presumably, I need to go and build one. I'm tapping the hammer in the bottom left, mm -hmm. and it's telling me to build a landing craft. In order to do that, I need not gold, but wood. So yes. yeah, I've got 300 wood at the moment. I'm tapping that, and that's going to take up 150. So we're already in that same resource management territory that Clash of mm. Clans is so mm. famous for. Definitely. And so popular for, because, I mean, it cannot be understated just how popular Clash of Clans actually is. As in consistently one of the biggest things on the App Store, always in the top 10. Um, and they are making money hand over fist. This is one of the games that proves how the freemium model, as much as lots of people despise it, and as much as I personally have issues with it, the reason everyone's making these games is because of games like Clash of Clans. Mm -hmm. Because they're free to download, everyone gets hooked, and then starts spending money on them. You might not, but there are people who are, and they're people spending like a me. lot. People you, like me. Yeah, you do. Mm, I right. do. I've gone a wide shot, and I've now tapped in onto the enemy base, which looks a, a bit more armed than mine. They've got a, they've got a proper gun. Yep. All right. Nightmare. Okay. So I've got to select the artillery, and then tap on the enemy building to fire, which I'm going to do. Bam! I'm launching missiles at the guy. Fantastic. Now I'm tapping on my troops and tapping on the shore, and uh, my APC has just run them over to the beach, and they're now caning it up the island towards the sniper, and slightly getting mowed down in the process. Eep! I'm just having to watch as this all goes on. It's like um, Saving Private Ryan, but slightly cartoony. <laughs> as if as if done by sensible software. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. I know, wouldn't it, though? Well, that's kind of what it was, because when I see little troops in little helmets in an isometric viewpoint, I do think cannon fodder. Can't mm. help but think that. It's a little ca cartoony and fun. That's nice. When the building exploded, all the trees kind of moved outwards from the shockwave. That's quite yeah. nice. It definitely looks a lot better than Clash, I would say. like It's got a lot more movement to it, a lot more warmth, I suppose, a little bit more... I've just liberated the, the locals. Apparently yeah, they were we, under the tyrannical rule of someone. Yeah, it's got some really weird dialogue where it's it's like, oh, you liberated the, the native people like through force. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the best little, kind of liberation done with a massive shotgun. It's it's a little bit strange. I liberated some kids off my lawn the other day. It was really satisfying. <laughs> Don't worry, they're free, free now. Yeah, so free. Okay, so we're back at base, and I need to build it up to increase my strength. The Blackguard are evil, evil. So we have to fight them on the beaches, as just like Churchill did, um, only not on an iPad. And we'll never surrender, just like Churchill did, only not on an iPad. Right, so here's my island. Can I zoom in? I can pinch to zoom. I've got little arrows, which I presume means I can possibly either move or upgrade them. Let's hit the upgrade button. Yep, I can upgrade to level 2 if I want to. So, now I've got my little starter base. What do you recommend, Peter? What's the first, What's my next move? Mm, I would say, uh, is it possible to get another sniper tower at the moment? Let's have a look. I can build residences. Oh, you might want residences because you need to build up your gold supply. And Defenses, your... I, I don't have the ability to build a sniper tower. I need to upgrade the headquarters to level 2 in order to build more. So that cool. sounds like a thing I should probably okay. do. Where's okay, my HQ? Through. Go for that. So it's the square building that you Oh, yes, got. headquarters. Right, I'm going to upgrade that to the next level. That's going to take five minutes. Um, I can, But I need resources in order to do it. And it's giving me the option to buy buy the missing resources. I, Absolutely. I, I totally have enough resources to do that. That's fine. So presumably this is going to take five minutes, right? But can I speed it up? Of course you can, because I can guess speed what, it up. guys? This is free to play. <laughs> and as I can see here, I've got a little arrow, uh, sort of lightning strike, which I presume is the speed up button with two gems on it. So if I tap it right now, do I want to finish the upgrade for two diamonds? Yes, I do, because we're on a stream and we're not going to sit here and wait for five minutes. So that now tells us that the base is big enough for me to handle heavies. So I can now build heavies if I want to, which I probably do. Oh, oh! You want to hand? You want to handle heavies? Right, uh, you so want I can build another sniper tower. I'm going to do that first thing. Let's move okay, that around, and that. now I can Let's move just it. Burn Let's through some of that premium currency that you've been given, because obviously the gems are the premium currency. Those little purple right, okay. gems. Sure. Um, 
Now, I will explain the way that the other currencies work. So, obviously, you've got those speed up timers that are gems. You've got gold, Mm -hmm. and that is your equivalent of like the the, the goopy stuff from Clash of Clans. That is the kind of uh, thing that will uh, bolster your troops and it will improve your troops. It will upgrade them and it will give you more forces to play with. There's also wood. And that's usually, especially early in the game, that's to do with creating the actual buildings themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, well I've only got two bits of wood left now, and all these residences, they seem to take up an awful lot of wood. Mm. So do how you... does one get more? Okay, well, if you want to get wood, James, let me explain. Uh, <laughs> you want to, this is a uh... slippery slope, isn't it? I'm sorry, the internet. You want to... Okay, so... If you tap on one of the trees that's near you, you yep. might be able to expand. Uh, it should have Ooh. a little dig thing. Yeah, it does. So this oh, means that you can expand out your island, and while you're doing that, you know it gives you more space to play with, but also you'll be getting uh, the, these supplies of wood that you'll need to build. It's cost me a lot of money, though. It's cost me a lot of gold in the it process. It does indeed. So this right. is why you need to balance. It's A lot of this is to do with... Uh, well, it's a strategy management game, and I think it's a, it, it's a it's got that genre title for a damn good reason and that's essentially that you really do need to be micromanaging your your numbers and that sort of thing i see i see do you have more forces at the moment do you have a full amount of forces or do you have let's have a look i'm not sure let's go to my defense options and support is it in support no that's a radar thing do I have to go over to the forces themselves and just hit them here? The landing under the, crafts. Yeah, yeah. You go to the landing things and there should be a little plus sign on the oh, right yeah. thing. Or unless they're full. I've got what? five. I've got okay. five of each. I think that's the maximum at the moment, right? So, so some of the best ways that you can get more of these resources is by attacking other places. And ah, okay. I feel like that is as you've seen, the building stuff is very much like Clash of Clans. They haven't moved really away from that kind of stuff. Mm. You know, they, they very much kept it to the, the same sorts of um, same sorts of ideas. Sure. And it's the, it's really the battles that di- sort of distinguish it between okay, okay. that and Clash. So I would I would jump into a into a battle if you All can. Alright then, if I'm fully stocked, what I'll do is I'll pinch out, and that shows you the whole island, which does mm. look really nice actually. It's and pretty. Very impressive water effects and stuff. Mm. It's a good looking, good looking game. Alright, so I'll, I'll hit the compass and that shows me where I am. There's me. Uh, and there's an island out here with some cash on it, something with some volatile materials, and something here with a sharpshooter. These look like operated, uh, sorry, islands that are controlled by my enemies. So Absolutely. I'll go with the volatile materials one. I'm going to attack. Attacking costs me money, again, 140 gold, but who cares? Here we go. So my ship has appeared, and I've got two lots of five squads. So first thing I should probably do is shell the buggers. So... Absolutely. Is that so the way forward? If you if you want to shell, do you have access to flares at the moment? Uh, I don't know. I've got access to this button down here, the bottom left hand corner. I've got a great mm. big bullet, which seems okay. to cost three. It it does. So the, things. so that little bronze thing, that's your energy. That's right. your gunboat energy essentially. Sure. And what it does is, if you if you select the artillery shell and then tap on the. Ooh. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's the stuff. Awesome. So you can you can weaken their defenses before you go in. Now, because you've started shelling, that does start the battle. They they so, panicked and yeah. So you want to start putting in your troops so that they you know go towards the uh, the, the the enemy forces okay. essentially. I've, I've put them both onto the beach now. They've come rollicking up there and now they're charging forward. Mm-hmm. I did a little bit of damage on the on their artillery sniper thing, but they're all piling on it now and have just blown it up, which is class and so now let me zoom in and get close on the action here and so now they're blowing up what look like they're kind of barrel reserves or something yeah so this is where some of the strategy Ooh. starts to come in nice the those uh those are oil drums okay and they're as far as i can tell they're only found on ai enemy bases mm-hmm. and what they do is your troops are still of the thinking from Clash of Clans that they will just attack the nearest thing that makes sense. Okay, okay. So they do that. So part of the battles is trying to keep them in this, keep your troops in the right places and right. taking them to these to these areas because obviously you only have like four minutes to complete a thing and to complete a level you have to destroy the headquarters. Okay, I see. So if you spend too much, if they spend too much of their time doing all of this stuff and destroying all these oil barrels and, and that mm-hmm. sort of thing, then they will you know, you'll, you'll, you'll fail the level. Gotcha. I just um, got help from the natives there. They gave me some coin for helping them out. Well, which was rather yeah. nice. 
it's it's very nice for uh, an invading nation to go along and liberate the uh, the locals and then them give them money. I've got nine gold from that. If I'm tapping on the different buildings and they're giving me the resources that they've yeah. generated, so whether that's wood or gold or whatever. Yeah. Um. So that was cracking. I'm gonna. I think I took a couple of hits there. Although okay. my guys are all still alive, and I presume that the energy recharges after each attack. So, or... yep, they are they are restocked. They're they're, they're completely uh, healed. Brilliant. You do not lose all of your troops after sending them to battle, which is completely different from Clash of Clans. And personally, I think that's fantastic. Okay. Okay. Um, you will eventually. I don't know whether or not we will get there uh, in the next in the next however long, but. You do eventually unlock flares, and flares right. allow you to direct all of your troops once the you've actually once you've actually sort of set them going on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So you can you can tap uh, to choose flares, and then you tap on a building, let's say, and you say, "No, I don't want you to go and attack those stupid barrels. I need you to, you know, I need you to go and attack the actual headquarters instead. That's what I need right. you to." Do. Okay. And so there is the there is more strategy to it. I've been playing it for, I would say, about 10 hours now. Okay, wow. Yeah. Um, and it does fall back into that loop of, you know, when you're building stuff, you do have to walk away for two or three hours mm. and, and just kind of do do that kind of thing. But this is the kind of game that you don't sit down and play for hours and hours on end. It's the sort of, I'm going to get it out um, while I'm on the um, subway. and then I'm I've gonna been arrested for that. You have I know. to be careful. <laughs> then I'm going to start playing with my phone. Um, and... Um, and uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna start this and maybe play a few battles and then you know exit out of that and go and play something that's a little bit more hardcore or whatever. Okay. Well, that's what I'm I'm just sticking on the battles. If I need to buy uh, if I want to upgrade any more people, then I have to upgrade the thing to a level four, and that's going to take an hour or like forty gems. So what I've decided to do is just destroy another island. Yeah, absolutely, and that seems to be the way forward. <laughs> and it does give you that option. And curiously, you know, for a game for a Clash of Clans was oddly a passive experience for me it was definitely more about building up my base and staying away and not really being attacked and making right. defenses and whatever but this is a much more i'm not i'm not hugely into pvp at all and yet this is definitely encouraging me to go out there and battle people because it's fun it's actually genuinely very entertaining and once you do start to get into more and more battles those the, the gold cost become you know it becomes completely trivial you know I've got tens of thousands of gold now and it's like three or four hundred to enter each battle right. so the more you play it the more it opens up and the more strategies that take place and um, later on you find um, a, a warrior for example who will has no range whatsoever to to their attacks but has this hammer that when they attack the enemy it gives them health back oh, okay so it, they're a melee uh, they're a melee um, class enemy. A class unit, I should say, and you know they that that's kind of the strategy that you need to use. Some some of your troops are more inclined to go and just absorb bullet fire. Some of them want to stay back and right. are good at attacking buildings, that sort of thing. For me, I think this is this is like the next step from Clash of Clans. I think this is the mm -hmm. if you are bored of that, or if you played it and just thought there's not quite enough to this, I think this is the one that you want to upgrade to, because it's it's really interesting. Well, um, I've just explored a little bit further. I removed the fog of war. There's clouds covering areas of the map. Again, I had to pay coins in order to do that. Um, but I've done that, and I've discovered a new area. Unfortunately, they have a great big artillery thing which is, may make short work of my troops. Mm. Oh, we'll see. I think this is a level 3 base and I'm level 2, so I think I might be pushing my luck. But I seem to have taken it out okay. As you can see, there is a battle timer at the top, like Peter said, so it's a 4-minute battle or uh, it's game over for you. I have totally taken it out and liberated a bunch more people. Apparently, the people I destroyed were called the Blackguard. Uh, and the natives are getting upset and telling me a sob story. This gives me medals, a lot more coin for that one, and a bunch more wood, which lets me build up my base further. So I, I, I can see how it can suck you into a sort of loop. These games, yeah. that's what they do, isn't it? They're all about these compulsive loops where you, you check it out, you do a bit of exploring, you buy something, you come back, you defeat another thing, you build up a bit more and Till you've got this huge base, and I, I haven't spent a, uh, you know, I haven't spent a single penny yet, and I've really been enjoying it. You of real to, money, you mean? You of real money. Gotcha. You do have to be patient, mm -hmm. and if you're not, then it's just not going to appeal. But okay, I, I do feel like, um, you know, it's free to play. It's out, I believe, tomorrow. 
Yep, it should be. It's been out in Canada for a while. It's been in soft yeah. launch. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's going to be out. What's out in New Zealand at the moment, I think. New Zealand and Australia. And according to Supercell, it should be out tomorrow at midnight. Obviously, mm -hmm. the global success of Clash of Clans is something that's very, very difficult to recreate. But Supercell have obviously been working on this for a long, long time and putting a lot of resources into it. So whether it's going to be the next big thing is kind of up to you guys. Mm. It depends whether it takes off and whether you pick up on it or not. But there you have it. That's Boom Beach. So is it Clash of Clans 2? Mm. We'll have to wait and see, I suppose. That is going to wrap it up for today's Eye on the App Store. Thanks ever so much for joining us. If you're new to the show, come back and join us. We'll be back here every Wednesday, 5 o'clock in the evening in Britain, or it's 10 a.m. at the morning if you're on Pacific Daylight Time in America at the moment, or 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think. Uh, join us again on Friday, same time, so in a couple of days' time, when mm. we're going to play uh, a new release in greater detail. Might be this one, haven't decided yet, but we'll play something good, and we'll do it properly for an hour or so, and give you a really mm -hmm. solid look at it. Um, and join us again for more app spy stuff thanks ever so much i've been james that was peter wellington cheers guys thanks for joining us take it easy bye bye bye